If ever an adventurer surely was, it was a little bee whose name was Buzz. Buzzy, actually, just Buzz for short. A flying, wandering, wondering sort. Good morning, ladies. Hi, Bud. His tiny size, just that of a pea, makes travel easy if you are a bee. Hello, Mr. Sun. There are plenty of ways to hitch a ride, plenty of places to sneak and to hide, like on the back of someone's bike, or on the elbow of a boy named Mike, or on the lace of a little girl's shoe, or on the tail of a cow, the kind that says, Moo. There are many ways to see many things, if you're a bee like Buzzy, who never stings, and who never wants to be snug in a rug, because Buzzy is a traveling bug. And especially with a friend like Tiki, getting home is never tricky. Tiki always knows, because he's a clock. And when it's time to go, he says, Tick tock. But one of the problems with being so small is that sometimes Buzzy has no choice at all. Because even if he doesn't want to go on a trip, a strong wind can grab him right in its grip. And so one day the wind came through, and that crazy wind just blew and blew. And it blew so hard that it was Buzzy who was blown far and fast right to the zoo. Oh, look. I've landed at the zoo! With so many animals to visit, I'm not sure where to start. I think I'll follow that bright green car. It looks like I'm off to see a creature whose nose is certainly one of his best features. The elephant's nose looks like a hose, but works more like a hand. With its finger-like grasp, he can pick up and clasp his favorite things to feast on. Elephants roam Africa and Asia. They are grand in height and also very bright. They have giant ears they use to hear, but also to cool them when the sun is near. off from the hot day sun is this big guy's idea of fun. Hippos love to splash around with any water that can be found. They are quite an enormous beast with very, very, very large teeth. And what might you ask does he eat? Lots and lots of veggie treats. Hippos have a mouth that can open four feet wide. A nifty place to try and hide. Four feet wide. Can it be true? It's so much larger than me. Just a little tiny bee. Oh, I'm so glad that this morning's wind blew, for here I am with a kangaroo who comes from Australia far, far away. To you, Mrs. Kangaroo, I say goodbye. The way she moves is one of her things. To get around, she just springs and springs. Instead of walking, crawling, or flopping, she's always jumping, bounding, and hopping. And for little roos too small to be jumpy, they ride in their moms, which can get bumpy. 
Cause moms have a pouch, like a little bag, that carries babes while they zig and zag. Unlike kangaroos, who ride in a sack, baby gorillas latch onto mom's back. Moving through shrubs and grass and trees, they hold on tight with their hands and their knees. Gorillas are the largest of all the apes, but to get that big, you know what it takes? A lot of veggies, which they eat and eat, and sometimes a banana when they're in for a treat. Just like you, they have fingers and toes, and ears, and eyes, and even a nose. Gorillas are not so different from you. They can walk on two feet, though they rarely do. Although gorillas walk around, a snake usually stays close to the ground. He slithers and coils and moves very fast through the forest, the trees, and through the tall grass. Snakes' bodies are covered in tiny scales from the tip of their head to the end of their tail. The scales help them move with a bit of a groove since snakes have no feet to help keep a beat. And though snakes have two eyes just like you and me, they use their tongues to really see with the Hiss, hiss. It usually means a friendly hello and that they are just sensing where they should go. Oh, look, someone's lost a balloon. Whoever it is must want it back soon. Oh, no, the girl is down there crying, seeing her balloon off and flying. I shall try to get it back, but I hope I won't get too off track, for I still have much to see today, so I can't let it lift me up and away. Ugh, here I go. I must stay strong. If I keep flapping my wings, it won't take long to bring it back to a very sad girl. Oh, it will make her twirl and whirl. Little Miss, you now seem in better shape. Your balloon was trying to escape, but now it is found, and to you it's been handed. But I'm not sure where I have landed. Are you aware? Do you know where? Why, Buzzy Bee, you're at the poor brook. Oh, yes, what a wonderful end to sit down beside this great white friend. Polar bears live up in the snow where it's way too cold for most people to go. But the bears are okay when it gets really chilly. They even go swimming, though that may seem silly. How's the water, Mr. Polar Bear? Seems like a good day for washing your hair. Be sure to enjoy the rest of your swim. I'm off to check in with your friend, the penguin. Penguins are birds, though they cannot fly. In fact, they've got nothing to do with the sky. Instead, they've got wings made for the ocean, and they swim and they dive, and they're always in motion. On the land, they have a little less grace. They waddle and sway and then stand in one place. But then once again, they're getting all wet, and through the water, they'll speed and they'll jet. And though they may seem overdressed, swimming around in their black tie vest, that tuxedo is just their everyday wear, the wear they wear everywhere.
Actually, lots of critters wear white and black on their heads and their tails and all over their back. They come in all sizes, all shapes, and all types, like this guy who dresses in black and white stripes. Zebras are really a short-legged horse who travel in herds, as a matter of course. You will rarely see one traveling alone if you visit the plains of Africa, where they call home. Mother zebras make a whinnying sound whenever there's danger lurking around. A pack of zebras can sound the alarm, and this can help keep them safe from harm. Different from creatures black and white, here is a guy who's a little more bright. He's the flamingo, and he's very pink. A bird that pink? Who'd ever think? And also strange is the way that he stands, with one foot tucked in and the other on land. How does he balance? How does he stay put without falling over just on one foot? Standing like that for any time at all. After a while, you'd surely fall. Guess it's just one of those mysteries created by natural history. Speaking of mysteries, you might be quite stumped. Why does the camel have such a big hump? Since camels live in the desert and don't eat every day, they store nutrients and fat in a very clever way. Their humps provide them with food when they roam, since they sometimes travel far from their home. There are two types of camels, but you can tell them apart. The Asian has two humps and the Arabian one. Oh, isn't the zoo just so much fun? A day at the zoo, there's so much to do, and so many creatures who are cool and are new. They're all so different from each other, too. Like this funny guy, seems he couldn't be true. Just watching him move sure makes me laugh. This gentle giant who we call a giraffe. Though his legs are also long and sleek, it's really his neck that makes him unique. Since necks don't really exist on bees, Watching one long enough to reach the trees really amazes a bug like me. But I'm sure you too can't believe what you see. He's even taller than a house, a million times bigger than a mouse. In fact, he's Earth's tallest creature, making him Earth's best creature. Munching leaves from the highest limb, giving treetops a little trim. Now here is an animal with quite an appeal, the very graceful, playful seal. With a streamlined body and flippers and toe, the seal is a natural in the water, you know. 
They feed on fish and are commonly found swimming and playing and frolicking around. Seals live in the north, south, east, and west. They are great divers. In fact, they are the best. Because of their flippers, they're able to glide, and their webbed feet and hands help them swim with the tide. Now here is a sort of silly chap. This gigantic bird has wings that flap and is covered in feathers from head to toe. But the air is a place that this bird cannot go. Yup, this ostrich is stuck down on the ground, but it really doesn't stop him from traveling around. He is really quite agile and can make a quick dash because if he wants to, he can run really fast. This fellow is the biggest bird in the land. In stature and height, he is really quite grand. Wow! Look over there. What could it be? This is an animal I've got to see. The rhino is a curious fellow. But I wouldn't say he is really that mellow, 'cause even though he's hefty and large, he can quickly turn and quickly charge. Rhinos don't have very good sight, and any movement can give him a fright. But rhinos are not to be feared; they are animals we should revere. There are five different kinds of rhinos, all varying in size. The biggest can weigh more than a truck. Can you imagine if he got stuck? We'll soon have to go, Buzz. It's nearly five. They'll start worrying about you back at the hive. You're right. You're right. But there are a few we've missed, and we can't leave the zoo without them making our list. We still haven't seen a single big cat. The zoo and no cat? We can't have that. So off we'll go to see the tiger and lion. Then I promise you, Tiki, we'll be off and flying. The tiger is far from itty bitty. In fact, he's the world's biggest kitty. He wears black stripes upon his fur, but when he moves really fast, they become one big blur. The tiger is the only cat that likes to swim, and with feet that big, you can't blame him, 'cause they'll move him in water just as on land. That paw must be ten times the size of your hand. It's faraway jungles that tigers call home. Asia is mostly the place that they roam, and when they're roaming, they're always alone. Guess they just like to be on their own. Like many animals, tigers are very rare. That means there aren't many left out there. We all must try very hard to respect them, and do what we can to try and protect them. We are. Last but not least, look! It's the king of all the beasts. After most of the day of looking and trying, we finally made it to see the lion. A group of lions is called a pride, though here there are only a few inside. Around their heads, boys have hairy manes to show they're the rulers of the African plains. And lion cubs play just like kittens, rolling and running and batting their mittens. 
with Bob looking on as they wrestle around, up high and watching them down on the ground. But once they're done having their fun, young lions love to laze in the sun and save their strength for the following day when they'll surely again begin to play. Tick tock, tick tock, Buzzy Bee, it just turned five. It's time for you to return to your hive. Oh, my day at the zoo is about to be through, yet there is still so much to do. Good thing there's tomorrow when I can return, because we have so much more we can learn. So off he went, that wandering bee, that tiny bug just the size of a pea, his head filled with animals that someday he'd see. And even though Buzzy loves to roam, he always likes to get back home and dream of tomorrow, a whole new day. Who knows where this bug may stray? Because in this big world, there is so much to see, especially for a traveling bee.